Hello everyone. Um, it's been 24 hours uh, since the Time Magazine uh, 100 list uh, was uh, published and uh, no new um, things came out of the Montecito Mansion. So today I decided to do something a little bit different and go back to uh, questions I wanted to uh, check before. So the first thing I'm going to do is an architect check. Uh, this is the uh, Wild Unknown Archetype deck, but this is not the full deck because the full deck is full, is, um, has um, um, uh, four uh, parts of it and only one part is uh, about the self, about the actual person. So what uh, I am going to do is first uh, I'm going to check four archetypes and the first one is uh, the first one is um, Meghan Markle uh, the second one is Harry the third is Thomas, Thomas Markle and the fourth is Omid Scobie and I will explain why so first I'm going to check Meghan's Markle archetype Megan Markle's archetype. Megan Markle archetype. Okay, the mystic. Uh, I don't think we need a lot of uh, explanation for the mystic, but the mystic is someone who is using his uh, mystic uh, uh, properties in order to achieve things it could be uh, black magic, uh, could be all kind of uh, other uh, uh, divination uh, uh, tools. But uh, this mystic card doesn't look like a very inviting card, if you if you know what I mean. Okay, so that's Megan. Okay, now let's see what we get about Harry. Harry's archetype. Harry's archetype. Let's see what we get. And we get, okay, that's not the one, that's the king. Okay, that's what he always wanted to be. That's what he wants, that is how he wants to feel. Uh, in his house, in uh, in the world, he wants to be the king. He always wanted to be the king, and I think that it's a wish that he might not want to to say out loud. But this is something that he always wanted. Okay, now let's see Thomas Markle. Thomas Markle's archetype. Thomas Markle's. Thomas Markle's archetype. So let's see what we get. And the healer. So Thomas Markle thinks that he can heal the rift in his family, that he can rift, heal the rift between uh, Megan and the royal family. And he thinks that by all of the uh, um, uh, all of the uh, interviews he's doing is getting somewhere. He's not. It is also, if you can see, a snake with three heads. A snake with three heads. So he's not completely innocent. Let's say that, let's say it that way. Now let's see what Omid Scobie archetype is. Omid Scobie's archetype. Omid Scobie archetype. So now let's see what we get. And uh, sorry, the queen. Okay, so we know that uh, uh, that Omid Scobie is not exactly. Uh, uh, okay, so he's a queen. Okay, and uh, he's a queen of his own world. I don't think that there could be anything more fitting than this. And why did I ask about Omid Scobie? So I saw a video a few weeks ago from River, 
uh, very good uh, YouTuber that spoke about uh, Omid Scobie and he said that he has inside information saying that Omid Scobie is completely out of the Sussexes uh, inner circle everything he does everything he writes is completely on his own accord he has no uh, real information coming out from the Sussex circle so that's what I'm going to check now I'm going to check if Omid Scobi is really out of uh, Megan's inner circle so let's just clear the cards and is Omid Scobi out of Megan's inner circle? Is Omid Scobi out of Megan's inner circle? Is Omid Scobi out of Megan's inner circle? Let's see what we get. Okay, so that's card number one, card number two, and card number three. Okay, so we have the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles is the Ace of realizing your needs and your wishes and the ability to, to realize it, and that's where he used to be. He used to be somewhere, somewhere else in the inner fold. That was uh, uh, that was his possibility. Maybe it still is, but he was poss he was able to uh, to take the next step to materialize whatever he wanted and um, uh, get uh, money out of that. Let's see what the side cards are telling us and we have here the three of uh, pentacles and here we have the emperor okay so the emperor is the father archetype okay is someone that is very strict uh, very uh, studious uh, he's um, uh, very um, um, if we can say it uh, is it is someone that is controlling the material world, exactly the same world of the pentacles, and uh, is authority. And uh, here we have the three of pentacles, which is a card of recognition, of recognition and success. This is uh, also a card from the, uh, in the number three, which is a card of a result of a result of the decision that he took uh, when he had to decide between two pentacles. And he took the right decision. So I don't think that Omid Scobie is out of the Sussex's uh, 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 inner circle. I think that he still is uh, there. He still gets his information from them. And uh, I believe that he is still very much inside the, the Sussex's uh, inner circle. And let's see what the underlying uh, uh, card has, say, has to say, and we get the fool. And the fool is a free-spirited person, someone whose freedom is the most important, freedom is the, the, the most important thing. And uh, this is someone that uh, feels free to do whatever he needs, whatever he wants. He doesn't feel like uh, he's been um, uh, restricted in any way. So I don't think that Elmit Scobie is really out of uh, the inner circle of Megan. Just not. Okay, now let's see. My second question for today is whether or not Thomas Markle is going to take another step in the next few months. Is he going to do something, something other, other than interviewing? So is Thomas Markle going to do something in the next few months? 
Is Thomas Marco going to do something? Will it be good for him to do something in the next few months? Will it even be good for him? Will it give him some kind of clout or ability to forward himself if he does something? So let's see what we get. No, sorry. First I have to clear the cards and then enter the question. So is Thomas Markle going to do something except interviews in the next few months? Is Thomas Markle going to actually do something to get Megan back in the next few months? Is Thomas Markle going to do something in the next few months to get his daughter back. So let's see what we get. Okay. That's card number one, card number two, and card number three. And the first card is the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords is not a family card. The Queen of Sword is someone that is very cold-hearted. She can cut things without any problem. She wants to be looked at as the idealistic one, not as the family uh, family uh, person. So, just by this card, it looks to me that he's not going to. But let's see what the other cards are going to say. So here we have the Ten of Pentacles, which is a card of family. So this could change things. And here we have the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands speaks about uh, uh, standing your own for just one more thing before you succeed. It's like... Uh, being uh, in a fight and you know that you have just one more thing that you have to stand and hold uh, just one more obstacle bef uh, before you get what you want. If you just uh, get this obstacle out of your way, everything will be okay. So these two cards are actually a positive influence on this Queen of Swords. So let's see what we see in the underlying energy. And the underlying energy is the Judgment card. Okay, and the Judgment card speaks about the cocoon that has to become a butterfly, which is a painful and hard process. But in the end, we get the butterfly. So Thomas Markle knows that this is not going to be an easy task for him. He knows that it's going to be painful. He knows that he's going to uh, to go through painful um, processes. He knows that, that, but he knows also that a change is coming. The judgment card speaks of change. A change is coming, and although it will not nullify what happened before, it will be a positive change. And if he will take a very wise spread, uh, to step, and maybe what the Queen of Swords wants to tell us is that he needs to act from logic and not from, the, from uh, emotions. Cut the emotions and act logical. If he does that, he will be able to succeed and to overcome the last obstacle and get his happy family in the end. So overall, I think that yes, Thomas Marco is going to do something. In the next few months, we are going to see something that Thomas Marco is going to do. We don't know what exactly, but he is going to do something. And now, 
I'm going to take another oracle card. It is called the Oracle of Isis. And let's see what this oracle card has to say to Megan. So a message, usually it's positive messages, so I'm not expecting to get something bad, but she deserves positive messages once in a while. So let's see what positive message we get. What positive message do we get for Megan? See. Positive message for Megan. A message for Megan. A message for Megan. A message for Megan. A message for Megan. Let's see what we get. Okay. So, scale of balance. Balancing, give and take, directing and flowing, play and solitude are ways to heal the relationship between the inner masculine and the feminine energies. Connection with the body is the most powerful form of healing for the feminine energy, as it holds the secret to divine feminine wisdom. So dance, sing, play. So what this uh, oracle um, card is trying to tell Megan that she needs to start, start balancing her life, uh, balancing her give and take, because up until now she's only taking and not giving, and maybe she will be able to uh, heal the relationship uh, between her inner masculine and feminine energies, and this will um, also um, affect her out, outer relationships, her family relationships, her, fam her relationship with the world. Because up until now, she is, uh, has been the joke of the world. So if she doesn't want to be the joke of the world, then she has to start connecting with her own bad, uh, body and to scale of balance and to start realizing that she needs to balance and to start giving and not only taking. So I hope you have a good uh, weekend uh, and I hope you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe and even share. And thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.